Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of the Melbourne Fire Brick Company. And uh, in this video, we want to show you a new firing technique. We've spent six years developing it. Uh, we've done a couple of videos on different ways of firing your oven over the years. And this technique is what we have settled on. We call it fire and forget. One of the things that we found with our other methods of firing the oven was that they were very involved. Uh, you would often have to come back and put more wood onto the fire and sort of feed it and tend to it, uh, move, moving the coals around, pushing logs into place. It was all, it, it, was, it was quite an involved process and it meant that you had to invest a lot of time in it uh, in order to get the oven fired up. The beauty of this method is that you don't have to stand in front of it the whole time watching it and feeding it timber. Uh, you're gonna fill the back of the oven with heavy timber. That's basically the, the main fuel that's going to burn to, to heat up the dome of the oven. In front of that, we're going to build a log cabin style fire on a raft of timber. And we'll show you that whole process. But basically how it works is this. We put big heavy timber at the back of the oven. Then we build our log cabin fire in front of that and we push it all the way up against it. We light the log cabin fire and then we put the door in front of the oven to control the airflow in and then we can leave it to burn uh, for as long as is needed. Now with our smaller ovens, if you're doing this in one of our P85 precast ovens, it's gonna be about an hour and 15 minutes. If you're doing it in one of our brick ovens, that could be anywhere from two hours to three and a half hours, depending on the size of the oven that you're firing up. Once the log cabin is lit, it's gonna consume all of the available oxygen that's coming into the oven. So it's gonna be the only thing that burns for the first 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, and as it's burning, it's preheating all of those big logs at the back of the oven. Uh, once the log cabin burns down, those logs at the back are up to several hundred degrees. They're red hot, they're ready to burn. Uh, and you'll find they just take off. Doesn't matter how big they are, you can have great big chunks of timber in the back. Uh, and just the sheer heat that they will have gotten to by the time the log cabin burns down means that they'll burn really well. So it's nice and simple. You light the log cabin, you put the door in front of the oven, and then you just leave it to do its thing because all that wood will burn so that the log cabin burns down and it's gonna heat up the floor. You see the embers are gonna fall down and they're gonna heat up the middle of the floor. The big timber all around the back and the sides, that's gonna heat up the dome of the oven. So you're gonna get this really even heat from this, this firing method without having to push and pull coals around and do too much uh, sort of fiddling with it. So that's what we like about this method. It's, uh, I guess, it's sort of hands off. Now, one thing I do like to say, we do call it fire and forget, but please don't forget it. Um, so we, we really don't encourage you to just walk away from the oven and leave it. Uh, make sure that someone is monitoring the oven at all times, just in case you get an ember uh, pop out and land on, somehow make its way onto something flammable nearby. Uh, so always make sure that someone responsible is, is uh, monitoring the oven but they're not gonna to have to do too much other than just keep an eye on it. So let's make a start. So we filled the back of the oven with nice big heavy timber. Uh, now how much timber you put in is kind of up to you and it's gonna depend on how hot you wanna get the oven. If you load it right up and put in, you know, 40 or 50 kilos of heavy timber, you're probably going to take the oven to over 500 degrees, depending on the kind of wood you're burning. Um, we put in a moderate amount. Uh, I'm probably, I'm guessing it's a good, uh, maybe about 20 kilos thereabouts, maybe a tiny bit more, uh, because we we just want to do some pizza. We're not wanting to burn everything. Uh, so the next step, now that the big heavy timber is in the back, is we're going to build our fire. Uh, we're going to build our log cabin style fire. One question that we get asked quite a lot is, well, wait, look how deep the oven is. How on earth am I going to build a fire in there? Like, I'm going to have to crawl in on my hands and knees, you know, uh, to get in there. And that's actually how I used to build fires when I built my very first oven. I can't recommend it to you. What we do is we build a raft of timber and we build the fire on top of that raft and we slide the whole raft in. So that's what we're gonna do now. 
First thing is just to find some fairly straight timber to make the base of your raft. You're gonna line that up. So you're gonna get four or five pieces side by side, put them down, and you're gonna put a piece across the front. And that piece across the front is very important because that's the piece that you're gonna be pushing to push all of the timber into the oven. Once we've got those four pieces down, we're gonna build our log cabin. First step is to put another piece of wood on either side so that we can put some paper in the middle uh, and not have everything sitting on top of that paper. So we put a piece of timber to the left and right of that raft. We put in some uh, paper in the void that that's created. We're also uh, using some uh, just some extra help here. This is called fat wood. Um, you can get it in most hardware stores around the USA. Um, basically, it's a natural fire lighter. Uh, so it's just gonna help get this going. Now that's not strictly necessary, but if you're a little bit worried about your kindling, maybe your kindling is not particularly good, um, this kind of thing can really help. And then we start with our kindling. So we'll put some kindling running left to right, and then we progressively put heavier and heavier timber on it going in a grid. So, you know, alternating 90 degrees so that you get this stack or log cabin of, uh, of a fire set up. Once you've built it, just make sure you don't build it too high. You wanna make sure you can still slide it through the door. You can then take it all together and push it all into the oven as one piece. So we've got our heavy timber at the back of the oven and we've pushed in our log cabin that's sitting nicely in the middle of the oven, hard against the wood at the back. So push it as far back as we can get. The last step before we light it is we wanna lean some heavy sort of timber, not, not massive, but some decent sized pieces of timber against the front of the log cabin so that when it starts to fall apart, it falls backwards because then it's gonna fall into all that timber that we wanna burn, rather than falling forwards and sort of dying out on the floor. So two, three or four pieces um, of timber against the front, and that's gonna uh, support it as it burns down and push it backwards as it, uh, as it collapses. Now, one note uh, is on timber to use. There's all kinds of different timbers you can use. In Australia, and we've said this a few times before, in Australia we have red gum, we have iron bark, uh, we have a bunch of different timbers that burn really well. Our ovens are all over the world now, uh, and so we've, we've got customers in Sweden and Costa Rica and all across the USA and Canada, uh, and timber is gonna vary depending on your area. Um, the key thing is making sure you're burning good quality firewood. Uh, so making sure you're not burning green wood. Um, try to avoid burning too much really soft timber. It tends to put out a lot of soot and sort of sticky sap uh, that um, doesn't generally burn with a really nice taste. Uh, so stick to hardwoods wherever you can. Um, by all means, use the softwoods for kindling, but where you can, use good quality dry hardwood uh, to be the bulk sort of fuel to fire up your oven. All right, so we just lit the fort fire about maybe three minutes ago, and it has just taken off. And something I want to point out, there's a couple of things here. Firstly, I just want to show you how well this oven is drawing. You can see the flames just, the flames of smoke just straight up the chimney. Uh, we're getting really good draw in this chimney, and one of the reasons for that is we actually have two lengths of flue because it's going up and through a roof. Uh, and so the more flue you have on uh, your, your, your oven, the harder it's going to draw. Now, we are seeing a little bit of smoke coming out the front here. And the reason for that is not that the flue's not drawing hard enough, it's just little puffs of wind. If you're in an area that's at all windy, uh, you're going to get smoke wanting to come out the front of the oven, uh, like it's doing now. But good news, uh, it's really easy to control that, and you can use your oven door. So, uh, back in the olden days, when we first started telling people how to use their oven door, we would tell you to get it and put it on in front of the oven like this, and then slide it across. And that would regulate the flow of air in. So air will flow in, and it tries to push all of the smoke up the chimney. One thing we did find though was soot would tend to get in behind the door, and you'd get these markings, this soot marking, where the door was. So to uh, get around that, uh, we've come up with another method. And this method actually helps in another way in that it blocks embers. Because if we have a gap here, embers can come flying out uh, the front of the oven. What we do is we put the door all the way across and then we pull it out by about an inch. 
Um, now you can vary that. If you wanted to slow the fire down, you could push it in closer and that will reduce the amount of air that's allowed into the fire. Or you could pull it further out and let more air in. And what happens is the air flows around the door and it pr provides sort of a, a wash of fresh air that stops the smoke coming out the front here and, and uh, dirtying up our brickwork. The other thing of course is you can see now it's sitting in the direct line of fire of any embers that might want to pop out. Now this is not a sure thing. Embers have a way of, of you know finding their way out of the oven so make sure you are monitoring it at all times. This is uh, using your oven door as a draft door. So we're allowing a draft of fresh air in and we're controlling that draft with the position of the door. So a fire's been burning now for about an hour and a half uh, and that fort fire's burned all the way down. So it burns down, it just falls over and it spreads itself out across the floor really nicely which then soaks heat into the whole floor of the oven. Uh, so we've got still got uh, our big timber at the back is burning really nicely and we've already cleared the dome of the oven. We've already actually burnt off all the soot so this oven's already over 350 degrees Celsius. Uh, so if we wanted to do a full firing, hey, we'd put that door back on and just leave it, let it burn for another hour or so, and that's really gonna soak all of the brickwork in, in heat and really bring it right up to temperature. Uh, but we're hungry now. Uh, so we're gonna move the fire around, give ourselves an area to cook, and we're gonna cook some. 